It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's, our goal. hey. it's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I am Tom Papa. Thank you so much for listening. I've been running into a lot of you out on the road lately, and uh, I always like when you're playing in front of all these people, a thousand people, whatever, and at the end when you're signing books and you have a couple people come up and they are podcast listeners, um, a much warmer place in my heart for you folks. So thank you for listening. Thank you for coming out and supporting the tour and all that good stuff. And, uh, and um, it just means a lot. Thank you very much. We've got a good one today. We've got Kelsey Cook on the program. Very funny comedian. Has a new stand-up special coming out in March called uh, The Hustler. And I'm very excited for you to um, uh, spend some time at the table with Kelsey. Really, really great person. I knew she was very funny. And now I know she's uh, even more than that, a super, super cool human being. I'd like to thank the good people at Diet Smoke for sponsoring the program today, dietsmoke.com, where you can get federally legal premium THC products. Yes, Diet Smoke delivered right to your door. They guarantee there's a THC product for everyone, different levels, different balance. You eat a little and just relax. Just a nice little buzz that doesn't blow your head off, but gives you uh, a little respite from the everyday. For Breaking Bread listeners, shop now at dietsmoke.com and use the code PAPA, P-A-P-A, at checkout for 20% off your entire first order. That's dietsmoke, D-I-E-T, dietsmoke.com, code PAPA at checkout for 20% off. So here we are. This is kind of a uh, this is kind of a moment for me in the year. I always kind of clock. You know, you go through the holidays and then you have kind of the residual, and you're still eating a bunch. And some people go New Year's and go dry January and and try and cut back on all of their stuff and do their life right. That never really makes much sense to me. I always feel like get to the Super Bowl. And that, because you know you're going to have a big blowout then, so why even try and lie to yourself that you're going to behave yourself (laughs) before that happens? And now we just passed it. And uh, I always kind of had this thing when I was like in right around college and stuff when if I had... uh, if I was drinking with my friends or, and I knew I was going to kind of cut back or if we were smoking weed and we're going to cut back, just kind of like go excess at that last moment (laughs) and smoke all the weed you have left. And then you're like, Oh, all right, done. And I don't need that for six months. Uh, same thing with the food. And yesterday, the Super Bowl, as of the recording of this, uh, it was my blowout. We had, chili we had giant beef hot dogs we had giant uh focaccia pizzas we completely uh went off the rails there was charcuterie there was cheese there was everything and um what i'm trying to say is your pal tommy is uh is full i am full up (laughs) i don't need uh alcohol i don't need food i don't need to chew i think i'm pretty good and I'm not going to go dry January or make any declarations. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, look, I started the morning off today eating a scone that I made over <laughs> over the weekend. A nice, sweet, sweet blueberry scone, which, by the way, pretty easy to make. And I just had a whole bunch of blueberries. This is another strategy that I'm going with, by the way. Uh, I know this is going against my not eating, but you know what I mean. Uh I always go off shopping and I buy all this food and then kind of mill around. What are we going to eat tonight and then end up ordering or end up whatever. I'm letting the pantry and the refrigerator dictate what I'm going to make. Open the drawer and be like, oh, right. We had kale for some reason. Open the pantry. Oh, there's potatoes in here that are starting to grow things. Uh, let the Let the food that you have in the house dictate where you're going to go and what you're going to make and just get in there and find the stuff and then make something out of it 
rather than sit there on the couch like a big lump and just be like, I'm in the mood for sushi tonight. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. But just get in there, and, and especially if you shop a lot. If you don't shop a lot and you're one of those people that lives in an apartment and there's you open it up and the only thing in the refrigerator is like snake food, uh, <laughs> this isn't a good strategy. But if you have a home and you do go to the store and you buy a bunch of stuff, yeah, yeah. I did have a good moment yesterday at the Super Bowl, by the way. Was, well, there was another couple there who I did not know, and... I'm not bragging, but I'm bragging that they found the bread and were blown away by the bread. And it's very nice when people don't know that you made something and they're raving about the thing that you brought in. And then uh, and then you get to come in with like, yeah, yeah, it's mine. It's a very cool th- moment during the Super Bowl. Uh, the new uh, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck movie called Air about Michael Jordan joining with Nike for the first time. And I may have a part in it that you might want to uh, go to the movie just to see your friend Tom. Yeah. I'm a little chubby in it, but it was for the role. Matt was a little chubby in it too, but he had to wear padding to look even skinnier than me. Whatever. Anyway, it's cool. It was a good trailer, and uh, people are into the movie. You can tell already. There's like a nice little uh, rumbling going on about it, and uh, it's the first one that Ben and Matt are making for their new uh, artist equity company. So uh, very cool, and I'm proud to be a part of it. So go uh, check that out. And uh, also, the tour is going along. TomPapa.com. Look for all my dates. I'm all over the place. A lot of them have been selling out, but we added an extra show in Atlanta. There's now a late show in Atlanta and a late show in Chicago at the Vic. So we're adding shows and touring all over the place. Go to TomPapa.com and look up all of that goodness. All right, enough for the intro. Let's get to Kelsey. Uh, Really, really great person. You're going to enjoy this conversation. She is a... uh, just a sweetheart and there's a lot of depth there and a lot of uh a lot of great things happening comedy wise and uh enjoy kelsey cook nice to see you yes you too yeah how long are you out here for <laughs> oh just another couple days just another couple days so you're staying where are you staying a hotel or friends or uh, i stay with my friend taylor tomlinson ah, who i know you also had on yes and yeah, it's. I, I was kind of adding this to what was already a crazy. I, I went to Spokane to see my family, right, and then went to Portland to do Helium, and then came here to do podcast promo and run my Tonight Show set. <laughs> I just found out I'm doing that in two weeks, so it's been kind of like a hectic, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> hectic week. I yeah. know it really is. When you wake up on a day, when you're home and you wake up on a day where you have nothing, even a spot that night. Yeah, it's so rare, but what a <laughs> great day that is it, it, <laughs> right? it's, it's so nice because you just went through um your special promo not that long ago yeah and it's yeah it is a beast it's it, like doing all the things just trying to get the word out yeah, yeah and you're like oh i'm gonna be done with touring so that'll be nice and then the special come out and then you realize oh but <laughs> now i'm traveling never for stops. that yeah. yeah 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 it never stops Oh, those days when you have absolutely nothing. And then I start to crave nothing to a point where if if one little thing pops up, you're like, oh, come on. (laughs) Really? I've got to go to the post office? Oh, (laughs) mail something? Your tolerance just drops so quickly. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. I don't know what it is about having to do like a like a clothing return, anything that involves FedEx or the post office, but it's like, forget it feels like somebody's asking me to fly across the country to do it. I don't know why it takes so much energy. My, fr- my friend and assistant Joey is here mm-hmm. and the whole reason we work together is so he'll go to the post office. <laughs> True. I know. I'm like, I don't need an assistant. I would love to hire somebody just for that for me. It would be a great actual service. Yeah. Why? There needs to be an app. Yeah. For just returning things. I have so many clothes <laughs> in my closet that are ill-fitting that I don't like, but it's because I bought them online and I just, you the can't. time passed for me to return them. And so I'm like, well, I, you I, live here now. So for some reason, I think I was bu- trying to buy uh, 
a baby gift for my friend. Yeah. And I was, it's been, it's too long. Like I mm-hmm. just got to get something. I wanted yeah. to be meaningful and now that's done. Now I'm like, <laughs> yeah. it's gotta be. Fa- now and, it's just a thing. Yeah. And then I thought I ordered a baby like blanket and a fitted King sheet showed okay. up. My wife was like, do you live somewhere else? Like this doesn't even fit our bed. I'm like, no, it was supposed to be a baby. I don't know what I did. She's like, well, you got to bring, you got to bring it back. I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. We have a kid fitted king sheet now to the end of time. We just have to buy a king mattress. I'm not printing a label. (laughs) It's too much. I can't do it. Yeah. That's so hilarious. What a puzzle for your wife to try to solve. Like, does he have another life? But like, why would yeah, she's this like, be she... involved in it? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. such a weird. Yeah, yeah. I was like, even if it was my girlfriend, like, would I just buy her a fitted sheet? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, bring it to her house. This Walter White other life. <laughs> yeah, like, burner what... phone of a king sheet. Yeah, that's a great mystery. Yeah, but... what an odd relationship that would be. I know. If you're buying, like, <laughs> random sheets for your... <laughs> Mistress, what? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we know we're going to have them. So if, if you have a king sheet, you can have it. And this is I your bread. So that's good if you're going to stay with her. Feel up the underneath just because I timed it out oh this morning my gosh. when I was uh, doing my radio show. This is so kind that you do this. I mean, so here's, okay. I, I had to tell you um, at some point because I feel like an imposter. I okay. Actually, I can't eat bread. You can't. I can't. Taylor... Can. We'll eat it. Taylor will eat it. Okay. Um, I sh- I feel like I shouldn't be allowed on your show. This is such a wonderful thing you do, and I can't even eat it. Well, I'm so sorry. Before we kick you out, I know I was like, so questions. if you bounce me, I'll understand. What do you have? Fibromyalgia? <laughs> What's the thing called? <laughs> The clinical term. Why can't you eat bread? So um, back when, gosh, when was this? Was this in college? Mm-hmm. I went and got my hair done. Okay. And the salon I went to, they were doing free facial waxing that day. Uh huh. They're just like, well, you're getting your hair colored. People are here just, they're training. We're just doing a free little spa thing. And I was like, okay. So this lady waxed my entire face, uh-huh. which I, I didn't, you know, I was like a <laughs> teenager, whatever. Waxed my entire face. And then while all my pores were open, she like rubbed oil in them and I i mean she was just like walking around doing stuff didn't have clean hands basically just rubbed a bunch of dirt and bacteria deep into my pores and I had a crazy like cystic acne breakout happen whoa and went to the doctor they gave me um an, an antibiotic for that but anytime I would try to get off of it my skin would get really bad again and so they're like you know what I mean just keep taking it Fast forward to, I think I was on it for like three years or something. Which on is, what? Uh, it was like... The antibiotic? The antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember what it three was called. Three years? But that's way too long to yeah. be on an antibiotic. Where were you living? Where were these doctors? Oh, like Cheney Washington. I mean, like in the boonies. <laughs> they'll just toss pills at your face and be like... Just what he it. had in the locker. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I mean, way, way, way longer than you should be on that. And so yeah. what that did is it was killing all of the good bacteria in my stomach the biome the biome yeah yeah yeah. that's why people tell you to like, take probiotics and all that especially if you're taking antibiotics and i wasn't and so i was developing all of these issues i was getting like ibs acid reflux all these things and then um candida i, I saw an esthetician i used to have little bumps all over my face mm-hmm. and she's like so i can tell just by looking that you've had an overgrowth of candida in your body for a few years were you on antibiotics for a long time and i was like yeah and she goes so you need to forever stop eating bread stop eating cheese stop eating anything um that's like fermented uh or Uh rises that feeds that bacteria whoa wait a second let's go back for a sec yeah uh candida candida Mm mm-hmm it sounds like a it sounds like one of like a weird like, <laughs> like a weird soda you get in like Haiti yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah a stevia based candy <laughs> right. Yeah, right exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah like a weird Canadian treat <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> You've I never had wish. candida? I wish. <laughs> it's like orange sherbet and chocolate. <laughs> yeah. I wish that's what it was. Yeah. What so, is candida? That so, is the biome. That is like the. It's, oh, it's been a long time since I did all the research about it, but it's. You can make it up. Great. Perfect. It's, <laughs> I believe it's the, the actual bad bacteria. The bad bacteria. Mm-hmm, or like the byproduct of it. But okay. it's kind of like zombies. Like it's very hard to kill in your body. It just feeds off of um, Uh that stuff that you put in it and so you have to kind of like starve it out right for it to go away but um you know it the symptoms pop up differently in different people so for me it was like those gut issues skin problems um i was really tired all the time a lot of brain fog and then i did the candida cleanse and um have had to kind of stick to it now for like a decade and a decade yeah it changed my life i feel much better but i'm like heartbroken because i how long did it take you to figure it out because usually those things are like um, it sounds like you solved it pretty quickly. Well, once I had started doing the um, the process of cutting those things out, I yeah. felt so much better within um, like a few weeks. Who and decided it was your gut? It was so it was an esthetician who was looking at my skin, and, and that's she, how it was. Yeah, she like uh, asked me all these questions, and it was like yes, 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 yes. And then was like, yeah, you've got. Jeez. Mm-hmm. She was ahead of her time. She's amazing. She's like Jennifer Garner's esthetician. She was, I don't know if she's still with this comedian. She was with a comedian years ago. So she was just hanging out in the green room at one of the shows. And I was like, I know this is probably annoying to ask you to do your job when you're not clocked in, but I have a bunch of skin issues. And I just wondered, like, can you look at my skin and tell me if anything's obvious? And she changed my life in the parlor live comedy club green room in Bellevue, Washington. Jeez. <laughs> like completely changed my life. But that's I, amazing that she was able to look at your face. And yeah. Be like this is what's going on. And yeah. Then, and nail it. And it was spot. I mean, it was exactly. God. Yeah. And You're so it lucky. cleared up like my acid reflux went away, all this stuff. But I used to my whole life, like pizza was my favorite food. Mm. Burgers were my favorite food. And so to not have bread and cheese has been devastating. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. I don't know if I would, I probably would take all the symptoms. <laughs> I was going to say, some people are like, listen, that would just be my life. I'd just be a foggy headed, bumpy faced, sad lady. <laughs> A bumpy face, sad lady. <laughs> Shoving bread in their mouth. Well, there's time. There's, <laughs> life is chapters. You're yeah. killing it now. You have specials. You're <laughs> doing you. talent. Like, there's a lot of reasons why yeah. you, you need to be nice on the camera. Yeah, that is a tough thing. Yeah, you can turn into a troll later after you've had <laughs> some success. And, you, and then you have that chapter where you're like, you're not going to, you know, yeah. box me in. And I'm going to zig when you want me to zag. Yeah. Then you go. I bread, burrow, bread I burrow like a raccoon. <laughs> well, give yeah. this to uh, to Taylor and and I will. Yeah, and you can just feel you can it. just feel the warmth. I smell it sometimes just to be mean to myself and remember when it can I smell it. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Oh my god, it smells so good. Yeah. Yep. But it's filled with candida. So sad. <laughs> so how come? Why wouldn't it's just so. So they created such an imbalance mm-hmm. in your gut mm-hmm. that you're like, you're a Petri dish for that, for the, <laughs> to the end of time. Yeah. Well, like you, it's not like, it, it's not like you get ahead of it and you can go back. Apparently some people can, and then some people just don't. And so right. I was hoping I would be somebody that could, but anytime I've tried to bring any of it back, mm-hmm. I feel sick right away. Um, mushrooms are another thing I can't have because uh-huh. it's a fungus. It feeds that. And I was having um, a dairy-free cream cheese for a long time that I mm-hmm. loved. And then without me knowing, they changed the recipe and they started using mushroom extract as a preservative in it. Uh. But I kept buying it not knowing. And about, I don't know, like at, at a certain point over the course of a month, my skin had gotten to that really horrible cystic acne place again. I was like, what is going on? I haven't done anything yeah. different. And I looked at the label randomly one day and saw mushroom and like called their uh, company and was like, hey, just out of curiosity, when did you start adding this in? And it was like right when I had noticed the skin get worse. So yeah, it's, I have tried to bring it back and it's just not. uh, But it is pretty great that you, like I know a lot of people that have an inkling that it mm -hmm. might be there, but it's all so vague and they try things and it's like never really get a hold of it. The food allergy the, stuff is yeah, tough. They, yeah, that you're dialed in is pretty great. Yeah. 
There's a brand called Base Culture. I don't know if you've heard of it. They're in Whole Foods and health places. I can have their bread because they don't have a leavening, um, any sort of like fermentation process with uh-huh. it. And so that's, I've does been it look able. Like bread? It does. It looks and tastes like bread. It's actually great. But um, that I like almost had tears in my eyes the first time I had a sandwich again, <laughs> like a year yeah. ago. And I found this bread because it's like, you forget it's. Uh, I mean, like wraps are fine, but it's yeah. No, like, I know. Bunless burgers fucking suck. Yeah, I know. It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, I'm sorry to torture you with this. No, it's okay. I've it's so gotten... funny because I literally was plotting it out like on my radio <laughs> shows. Like, okay, we'll be right back after this. They're like, why do we wrap? I'm, I have to pull the bread out oh, of the. Th- <laughs> I was like in the stages God, of. <laughs> I feel horrible. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, uh, you know, it, it, a gift is a gift. What you do with it is. That's true. Yeah. It feels like a gift and I'm sorry. What do you mean that you came from Carney folk? And is your dad <laughs> in the muse- the Hall of Yo-Yo Hall of Fame? Because I went to the Yo- the Yo-Yo Hall of Fame in um I think it's it's in one of the towns I'm going to look it up. It's okay. in one of the towns northern California. It's like in the oh. back of like a like a pharmacy. <laughs> sure, that's that checks out. <laughs> that's what that deserves. Um, so my my parents met playing in a professional foosball tournament. Right, in the you 80s. said that in your um, in your act, which is very funny. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That your what is how do you phrase it? That um, oh, I like I literally wouldn't exist if it weren't for foosball. <laughs> if it wasn't for foosball, which is sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that some people wouldn't exist if it weren't for boxed wine. So it's kind of like you know we all have we all have a little garbage in us. Yeah. But and then my dad was also he is like an international yo-yo man. He doesn't really do it anymore, but he used to like travel overseas for yo-yo demonstrations. Overseas would get paid, and then he also is. Um, his full-time job is that he's been a professional trumpet player in the Spokane Symphony for 40 years. Wow. But he's got all these weird offshoots. He's like the poet laureate in Spokane. He's a slam poetry champion. Just a weird, Jeez. weird background with my family. So wait, let's, let, if you, if you know, if you know this stuff about your father. Okay. Um, when did he start his yo-yoing? Oh, was he part of like the craze when like yo-yo yo-yo always seems to it hasn't in a while, but it always seems to have this moment of like it comes back and they put him on shows and yeah, um, I don't know what age he was when he got into it. I think it was like the Duncan brothers. Does that sound right? Yes. That there was something going on with them with yo-yo and he saw it and got into it. Uh huh. So he was a kid. I think he was younger yeah and he like really he mastered it he owns like a thousand yo-yos and has this crazy collection and can do all like just the craziest tricks yeah that is amazing yeah that is the coolest yeah and when you were a kid that must have been super fun watching dad yo-yo his ass off yeah the graph of coolness for that really depended on my age (laughs) yeah because he would come to my (laughs) elementary school when i was young and do demonstrations and at that age you're like oh my dad's the coolest like that was a fun thing (laughs) but then you get anywhere within a sniff of middle school and you're like you stay home don't you dare set foot but I'm trying to lose my virginity at some point in my life. I can't have you hanging around here. This is not cool. Like, you know, it's, that's so tough. It's so tough. That's a tough thing. Yeah, man. but anything that he would have done would have, you, you're horrified by it at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, you guys can just walk into the room and take a breath and we're like, oh God. Yeah, they say it's like a literally like a hormonal thing. Oh, it was a hormonal nightmare. You you're have two just, daughters? Yeah. Oof, you've probably been through it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like uh, yeah, different phases comes and goes. Yeah, you just don't know what you're getting. You just don't know. Yeah, and you want them to. Yeah, and then you throw social media on top of it. Oh my god, that's created like that. That for me, like there's, they're pretty even keeled. You know, a little emotional and stuff. Yeah, but you add in times when they're like deep into their phones. That oh. that's when, it's like it's like um putting them at more of a disadvantage like they're trying you know you want to you know yeah. you want to get a grip of this you don't want to feel like yeah why do i hate myself and everybody else yeah 
right? You're trying to yeah. wrangle that and you can't for, you know, a good amount of time. And yeah. then you throw the phone on top of it. That's too much. And yeah, it's too much. I also, I mean, this is a personal question. You don't have to answer this. But for me, I also, I got on hormonal birth control at 17, trying to help my skin at the time. And uh-huh. also, you know, then started to have a serious boyfriend. And I feel like that's something too with girls around that age. You're dealing already with so many crazy hormones. And then if you do either, if you're trying to get help with acne, if you become sexually active, those pills are like really tough on your body. And they don't really explain that to you as a teenager and I remember feeling like oh my god once I finally got off the pill like a decade later I was like oh I don't even know who that was really that was like a it made me so anxious it made all emotions feel very heightened and yeah yeah it, and there's so many things at play yeah like an acne medicine and there's a pill and there's an oh my gosh yeah ADHD yeah thing and like so what in What's those combinations the... yeah 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 God, it really, it, yeah, it's such a complex thing because then you're looking at these bottles. Yeah. And you're like, but I need that for this. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I know, but are you, it, are but we, but is this making this part? Yeah, worse? are we okay? Yeah. Is everything, there's, you know, there's a price for every little thing you put in your chemistry set. Totally. It's, yeah. But there is a hormonal thing uh, from uh, daughters to fathers where, it's kind of a protective thing that that is not the male. That's oh. the that's the male we're supposed to keep at a distance. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Can you explain more of this? Because I haven't, this is fascinating to me. Because yeah. I definitely went through that with my dad. Where there was a period of time where I just like felt yeah. very, did not really want a relationship with him. Which is almost. such a strange thing. But yeah. it's literally like the, the physical part of a young woman. Like that is... That's not for us. That wow. is keep that at a distance, like a protective breeding yeah. mechanism, which is so interesting. Yeah, which is Why so don't insane. Tell girls, this when they're young. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Why didn't they tell dads before they I, decide they want to have <laughs> children? <laughs> <laughs> or when your daughter like doesn't want to hug you, and you're like, "What's going yeah. on?" I, like yeah. everybody could benefit from that information. Yeah, yeah, I know. When I heard that, I was like, "Oh, that makes that makes sense." Yeah. You know, that, yeah, that makes total sense. But yeah, you can't. Uh, you just got to kind of ride it out, I guess. So when did you yeah. start to? When did you? Like, when did you say you were a hormonal mess? Was oh, it the yeah. pill? Was it around that time? Or no, that was 10 years after. So when did well, you like your the yo-yo guy again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remember being in like middle school, high school, definitely feeling when I had hit puberty of mm-hmm. like, whoa, I feel the emotions yeah. feel different yeah. lately. Yeah. So I remembered that. And then I remembered the feeling also of getting on birth control that it was just that anxiety it felt a lot easier to have racing thoughts and just be more anxious but i think you're so young that you think oh this is just like who i am yeah exactly so that's what i meant where it's like once i got off it uh my anxiety just became almost nothing and i had just assumed that was part of my identity so that was a really big thing to be like oh wow and then uh the dad the dad stuff i'm trying to think when i felt like i had wanted to become closer with him again Mm -hmm. I think some, sometimes something happens when you go to college and then you do have some physical distance that it lets you kind of miss them more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely those high school years, I just remember feeling pretty like anti all that, like getting yeah. a hug felt like I just didn't want to hug. I just was <laughs> like a wet cat. I was just like, I don't, I don't want to talk. I don't want a hug. And then, yeah. And now my dad and I are super close, but just sitting all. there with this yo-yo. Like, what? <laughs> she used to like, this. she used to like walk the dog. <laughs> I don't, I don't How do you make his living? Uh, so trumpet. Trumpet. So yeah. Mm-hmm, that, was being, the, that was the paying gig. That's the full time. Wow. Yeah. What mm-hmm. an interesting guy. Yeah. And sometimes people go like, oh, I bet you had, I bet your parents were so supportive of you doing comedy because they had mm-hmm. unconventional careers. But it actually, I think it was kind of the opposite, at least for my dad in the beginning, because I thought I was going to be a high school math teacher. Uh-huh. And I think for a dad, that's like 
great. Right. <laughs> great. Like a, just a stable, yeah. steady job. Awesome. And then I was like, I'm going to be a clown. <laughs> it's like a dad's nightmare that you're just going to go try to do yeah. comedy. That's, yeah. That has to, I would imagine as a parent, be like, do you have a degree? Like, why? <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you throwing your life away with this? And also, Did I they was, push back? My mom was always pretty supportive from the beginning. My dad was a little more unsure mm-hmm. until things started to happen. And then I think he was like, yeah. oh, okay, something's happening with this. Yeah. Also, I think from a dad's point of view, to I, I was dirtier when I had started, uh-huh. as I think some people, you know, that's, I think, more common. Yeah. And I think that's probably a good dad that if you see your daughter telling come jokes you're not like yay <laughs> you're probably yeah. like no yeah. don't. like <laughs> why who is this this yeah. isn't my daughter right. so i think that was probably a normal reaction yeah that is hard seeing your what again i'm not a parent but i would imagine it's like you always see your daughter as your little girl yeah and then you see them going on stage yeah saying whatever and it's like uh, yeah and what? you're like what is this going to attract what, yes what, what guys are going to come around and for sure yeah what did your mom do so my mom um was a she was actually my high school french teacher ah. but she was the, the french and german teacher at my high school oh that's yeah. great do you do you still speak i speak french but not like super fluently uh-huh. i can understand it better but uh yeah but she's like in the foosball hall of fame and <laughs> world champion foosball player and all that so definitely some strange amazing is there stuff. footage on her yeah mm-hmm. Doing so foosball there's a documentary called foosballers that was on it's been on espn a few times and people can download i think it's on like itunes or apple or whatever <laughs> nice. but yeah she's in that and <laughs> there are some clips online of her and i playing together too so that is amazing yeah i love this carney family it's a yeah it's great <laughs> now yeah. i wouldn't want it any other way growing up there were moments where i was like this is why can you guys just be you know dental hygienists or whatever like the rest of it all right let's take a quick break from our conversation with kelsey and talk about our favorite sponsor diet smoke diet smoke makes federally legal premium thc products delivered discreetly right to your door diet smokes variety guarantees there's a thc product for everyone with a not just flavor but also the degree and the kind of high that you kind of get for it. Uh, They've got blends with melatonin for sleep. They've got blends with caffeine for when you're on the move. And if you're looking to elevate any vibe, Diet Smoke has the product for you. Most importantly, Diet Smoke is great for all levels of THC consumers. Experienced users love the Delta 9 high for when they can't, melt into their couch and still want to function and us weekly just named diet smokes delta eight gummies as best for beginners that's my level even though i'm not a beginner i'm not really a um get high guy uh very much anymore but i do appreciate something especially when i'm not drinking that will give me just a little bit of relaxation and a little bit of an escape and will help me sleep if i do it early enough this really is a chemistry set, but it is literally, if I can do it at the right time, a little away from dinner, but not too close to bed, where you can just have a couple moments of like feeling good and then, oof, a nice sweet sleep and wake up with no hangover, that is the way to go. Diet Smoke cares about their customers. Each flavor is handpicked through several weeks of testing and sampling before release. And best of all, you don't if you don't enjoy your experience, their friendly customer service team will quickly address the issue. For Breaking Bread listeners, shop now at dietsmoke.com. Use the code PAPA, P-A-P-A, for 20% off your entire first order. That's dietsmoke.com, code PAPA, P-A-P-A, at checkout for 20% percent off was the house a strange setup like was there foosball where like normally there'd be a dining room table <laughs> yeah, that was my apartment uh during the pandemic was, it was. Uh, I, I had a foosball table instead of a dining room did table. you really yeah i was like i'll just eat on my couch like this is i have been so you love foosball too yes yeah, so i've played my whole life um my parents 
there, there's actually a foosball table here in the studio because yeah. we used to shoot my web series here, Rissa of Fury. But um, yeah, my parents were both training me since I was like two years old. Wow. So yeah, there are photos <laughs> of me standing on a stool so I could be tall enough to see the top of the table and they would put their hands on top of my hands and teach me how to play. So um, it's amazing. Yeah. My mom and I, uh, my, my dad doesn't really play so much anymore, but my mom and I would like still travel around and go to tournaments. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Why do you love foosball other than your parent connection? Like the game? I think it's such, um, I think it's such a hard game to master that yeah. there's something about that that feels I, I like the challenge of it. Uh-huh. it. I think it's such a misunderstood sport. It's yeah. such a bar game that people go in and just like spin the rods and <laughs> right, exactly. don't. It, but it's one of those things where it's like if you haven't seen it played on a professional level, you most people don't even know what it looks like to be played no. at that way with the certain passing and right. different shots and and all of that right so (laughs) i love the escape of it when i'm playing it's Mm -hmm. the only thing i can think about because right the ball is moving constantly you can't really break attention and yeah um also i've i've played sports my whole life but i've always been short so i was never like the hitter in volleyball or anything like that i was always the setter Uh and for me getting to slam a foosball really hard it's kind of like as close as i'll get to being able to dunk right (laughs) or anything like that but it's such an adrenaline rush to hit the ball hard oh that's great (laughs) that is great were you guys successful as a team so we won um women's expert doubles in vegas this is probably five years ago and that was a really cool thing to win together yeah because we there were some tournaments where we didn't play that well together but that was a that like i will always really (laughs) (laughs) cherish that moment yeah Mm -hmm. oh that's so great yeah very random yeah it is totally random yeah but it's it's great thanks it's like people like i was always envious of people that like just had a ping pong table in the living room where mm-hmm. they just had a uh, pac-man machine in the kitchen it was like these people know how to live yeah <laughs> yeah it's like bills might not be getting paid but these people <laughs> boy they, they know how to have a good time it's a weird thing to grow yeah. up having foosball tables everywhere but yeah. yeah well it must have been pretty easy for you like i grew up and everybody had straight jobs everybody okay. was you know there wasn't one person in entertainment or foosball mm. or <laughs> yeah or like yo yo raising oxen there wasn't like there was <laughs> yeah. it was all just jobs mm-hmm. so it was kind of like you had to learn like oh there's other ways to live yeah there are other ways to exist yeah i do think them living those lives did help me v- just give comedy a try yeah and be like you know it is possible i'm seeing my parents do the things they love yeah. so like let's just see right so that was nice yeah and so many people, like, like when you say like that they were a little hesitant, or your dad was. Yeah. Um, he, he, I mean, he's got to know. There's friends that had straight jobs that end up like getting fired and having no oh, career. Yes. It's like show business isn't that unreliable compared to what can happen to you in an a job. It's so true. I think it's comedy is such a business that like nobody knows yeah. unless you're in it yeah from the outside as i even my best friends from home i think are probably like yeah we don't know what you're doing <laughs> like <laughs> right. they're so proud of me and so happy for me but they like yeah. to understand how touring works and all that it's just like a very different world than a yeah. conventional career and so i think as a parent my dad picturing me trying to get successful enough in this business that you could do it for a living to him was just like, I mean, yeah. it's statistically impossible, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which it, it is. I mean, it's, it yeah. is such a weird thing to do. Yeah. But were you funny when you were little? Um, I think I was goofy when I was little with the people that I felt comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And then I was pretty shy when I was not comfortable around people. Uh-huh. I was pretty quiet, kind of introverted. And then, yeah, as I got older, I just, I really loved making my friends laugh like if something embarrassing had happened I loved telling them and and making them laugh but uh I was very kind of like straight a student didn't want to take risks that's why I thought I wanted to do be a high I wanted to be a high school math teacher at the high school I went to in my (laughs) tiny town I grew up in that's like how little uncertainty (laughs) I wanted in my life I just was like let's just do exactly what I can picture doing (laughs) 
And then comedy is complete yeah. zero certainty. But so where's that pop into the equation? So I, um, I got halfway through college doing the math major and I was in calculus three and just dreading class every day yeah. and was like, yeah, this is, this is so different than what I thought. Yeah. I thought I was just going to teach like, you know, honors algebra two and right. It's, it's, just, it's all you need to know. Yeah. And it turns <laughs> out it's like, they want you to be pretty fucking smart. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I really don't want to keep doing this. So what year is that? That was at the end of my sophomore year uh-huh. and ju- yeah, just miserable. Uh, our professor was Russian and spoke just kind of like broken English. And so uh-huh. the whole, like the whole class was failing the class. Cause we were all just trying to teach ourselves calculus three out of these textbooks oh from the eighties. It was oh brutal. So, um, I switched to a broadcast production major uh-huh. and one of the first classes that you had to take was public speaking. Uh-huh. And I had ended up turning almost all of my assignments into like like SNL like just like comedy yeah. sca- like I was be- I was being such a weird person I was like showing up in like costume like, like <laughs> I was doing the summer course so it was like only 18 people in the class and most of them were foreign exchange students from Japan <laughs> and I think it was like a couple other people from America in the class and it was like you'd have to give a eulogy and I gave a eulogy of myself but like <laughs> in character as somebody else and i'm sure everybody in class was just like (laughs) like she is going through something like she's working it out (laughs) we're here for the credits she's She's here for therapy (laughs) she's either really happy or so sad like either one but my professor had pulled me aside after class one day he's like you know like you should go do an open mic Uh because he's like this is all really funny it's like I can tell that you're really happy doing this it's just like you should keep doing it outside yeah. of class yeah because this is obviously like yeah. not the right just don't do it here just don't, can you please <laughs> leave the wigs at home like you're startling everybody it's funny to think that your whole career may have been pushed by someone who just wanted you to <laughs> calm down please in stop. his class <laughs> Enough of this. It's like it's giving you a different outlet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go burn your energy out in this dog park. I and know. And then come back. <laughs> I know. He was so sweet. And I really do credit him for making me feel like, oh, I guess maybe I should try yeah. this. Because he was genuinely, like, I would make him laugh in class. And that was such an addicting feeling. Right. And uh, so I <laughs> started doing open mics at the college. And Where was your school? Uh, Washington State University. Oh, okay. So there was open mics around there. It was just a monthly open mic in the school's cafeteria, which is a very dark way to start. Yeah. I mean, no, you're just a nuisance. Nobody's, <laughs> right. everybody has mashed potatoes in their mouth. They just want to eat. Clank and silverware. <laughs> nobody, they nobody cares. No. And, uh, and then I started a weekly show my senior year to try to give myself and the other people that were trying to do it uh-huh. an opportunity to just like do it more often. Cause once a month, right. that's a real slow trajectory to get better yeah and yeah i did that and then moved to seattle and i was in the seattle scene for about four years and then la and then spokane and now minnesota so it's been all over the place yeah Yeah. what was your uh (laughs) was the tonight show Mm -hmm. kind of like a a real benchmark definitely oh yeah i i had been touring with jim norton for a few years right sorry about that (laughs) deepest condolences (laughs) No, he's uh, he's so great. I always I call him. him my comedy fairy godmother because he like <laughs> really changed my life. I mean, he made it right. possible for me to do it full time. But it's just so funny to picture Jim Norton, who's this like you know self proclaimed degenerate, it being actually, this like you know whimsical like blessing me no, with like, stardust and yeah, being like but it's, <laughs> it's kind of like it's a wonderful life kind of angel. Like you <laughs> yeah. could totally see Jim in like wings, yeah, and a toga. <laughs> totally (laughs) yes with a little halo askew yeah (laughs) complaining about his coffee or something yeah he had a very funny bit on uh instagram last night about uh who is he talking about madonna oh yeah the madonna yes yeah about how 
it's hard being a sex symbol and then losing it. And that's the advantage of his life is he never was. So <laughs> <Everybody's> <laughs> pretty like, much the same. Yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. So funny. <laughs> it was great to watch him on the road for a few yeah. years because he is so brilliant and funny. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I had been touring with him for a <laughs> while and then did the Tonight Show and then did um, This Is Not Happening on Comedy Central right around right. the same time. And so those two things, I think, helped me kind of transition into headlining. Cause yeah. The clubs, you know, they just want like the logos, I think, at a certain point and to feel like you could maybe yeah. start to put some butts in seats. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But also just on a creative level, you you looked very established in both of those sets. Oh. You looked very professional and like this is... Oh, thank you. Yeah, there was a... There was definitely a um a level of professionalism that i think a, oh a, thank you i think like right like the clubs would see and be like yeah yeah okay thanks yeah and then of course it's the you know <laughs> are we gonna have two shows on saturday or one right <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah yeah right which is always part of the thing but <laughs> yeah but definitely it seemed so what how long had you been doing when you did both those spots so, um, I started comedy when I was 20 and I did those, I think when I was 28. So about eight years in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. Yeah. This will be that year 13, ready. which is yeah crazy how like at a certain point, like just clumps of years go by and you're like, Oh my God. Insane. Weird. Yeah. Very really weird. weird. I know. It yeah. is really strange. You see these people that are just like, Oh wow. We've been like that you started with. You're like, really this long <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's like oh maybe yeah. don't tell people it's been that long because it doesn't right. match yeah and then just found out um a few days ago that i'm doing the tonight show again in two weeks and so nice. i'm excited for that and uh feel grateful that i've done it once to kind of get at least those first nerves out of the way of like now i can at least yeah. picture exactly right. what it looks like to like walk out and stand on the clover and right know what that is yeah exactly yeah anytime something's new it's just okay this is yeah. may not be terrifying but you got to get the yeah rhythm of it and then when you return it's like oh, okay yeah this is so much easier yeah still i i, I think i definitely will still have some nerves but sure um, that was tonight show i feel like <clears throat> at least at that time it felt like comics were doing other things first on TV before they would do the Tonight Show, uh-huh. and the Tonight Show ended up being like the first TV thing I did. Uh-huh. So that felt a little like, ooh, I wish I had some more TV right. <laughs> experience under my belt because this feels like very high pressure to do this first. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm so glad I got to do it then. Right. So what do you eat for lunch when you don't have a sandwich? (laughs) So (laughs) now that I found that other bread, I can have actual sandwiches again. What do you put on it? I do um, turkey. Mm -hmm. I do dairy-free cheese because I still, uh, I don't do dairy because I just like, I I can't find a way to eat dairy that doesn't mess up my stomach. Yeah. So. What is, what's the dairy-free cheese that so you like there's a brand called follow your heart which uh-huh. sounds like just the most fitting <laughs> vegan <laughs> yeah. you know brand name but their sliced cheese yeah. is unbelievable kite hill makes a great um cream cheese and ricotta so there are a few brands that do certain uh-huh. types of cheese very well i was just talking with a vegan friend of mine and he was complaining how he has not found the cheese uh, that the makes cheese him happy dreams. yeah if, if it he's always has that little tang at the oh, end. Is yeah. That... I haven't found a shredded one that doesn't have that yeah. weird tang. Was it Dio? Yeah. D- uh, Dia. Dia. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is close. Yeah. And then not really. <laughs> I know. It, what a, is that leaves thing? leaves that thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's a nut cheese thing or. Yeah. But just that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good end. way to put it. Yeah. It just grabs you. Yeah. It won't let you not taste it. You're like, oh, this is good. This is nachos. This is just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my God, that's, it's so true. I've tried yeah. to have, um, like, it doesn't matter what you combine it with. It, it comes out. Yeah. People. But the slice doesn't do it? No, I don't taste any of the nya on a slice. Really? It's re- yeah. That follow your heart brand is very, very good. Follow your heart. All right. This is a, this is inspiring. Yeah. They do. A so good, no butter? No butter. Butter in things? Butter in baked Mm-mm. good? No, bu- no butter. No butter. Wow. Just, I know. Did but you I do lose feel a lot of weight great. on this? I did. Yeah. How much I, heavier were you? 
I think I had law. I'm trying to remember because it really has been like 10 years almost. Yeah. Um, I think I lost almost 20 pounds, like 15 to 20, which for me, that was a lot because I'm five, four. That's a lot. But I, you know, I was drinking a lot of beer. I sure. was very depressed. Oh, you can't have beer. That's fermented. Can't have, yeah. Right. I was very depressed working um, as a receptionist and doing comedy at night in Seattle. And I was exhausted, you know, when you're doing like all hours of work. Yeah. And I would go, I was in Seattle and I would um, take my lunch breaks comically early at like 10 in the morning and I would walk to a place nearby and I would get warm soft pretzels with beer cheese sauce and I would just like put my hood up and just like just house an entire (laughs) soft pretzel at like 10 in the morning just dead inside was that was a tough something's gonna fill the dead inside hole though (laughs) yeah that's a good place to poke around yeah so I used to, I, this is just to say that I was doing that. I was drinking a lot of beer. I was, uh, so I was, I was puffy. Puffy. I don't think anybody would have looked yeah. at me and thought necessarily like overweight, but like yeah. puffy. I did. You know what? I forgot about this. A woman thought I was pregnant actually, but I think it was, I think it was less like the weight on my body. I used to hold some weight on my face, uh-huh. kind of have chipmunk cheeks. Yeah. And then I was wearing a coat in Seattle that was like a pea coat that would tie under your boob and kind of poof out a little. Uh huh. And my friend and I, <laughs> on our lunch break, went and got ice cream, and it was this French ice cream shop. And the lady handed me my cone, and she goes, "So what are you do?" <laughs> and I was so confused because I hadn't had that happen before. And we just stared at each other for a second. She was like waiting for me to respond, and uh-huh. I was waiting for her to explain. And then we both at the same time realized, <laughs> I realized that she thought I was pregnant, and she realized I wasn't. And she was like, "Oh." Oh, I'm, I'm so, she was so mortified <laughs> and I was standing there with ice cream thinking like there could not be a worse time to be handed ice cream <laughs> than when somebody just thought, Enjoy I mean, it. it was just like immediately in the trash, like, okay, <laughs> like this, this and here's your dessert gone. tubby. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have a noose back there too? Like, do you have the cyanide pills as toppings? I just was, yeah, that was a low oh. point. So doing the candida thing did help me, um, lose quite yeah. a bit of weight, but I know. And I did a, uh, I did this thing. It was kind of like the whole 30 is kind of that way where like you eliminate these main things in your diet for a month. Right. Meat, cheese, all dairy, alcohol. And there's another one in there. It's not bread. And, uh, it was the cheese was the thing that I abused. Like you get a clear sense of what you Mm -hmm. really miss and what you really. Yeah. And man i dropped weight like that really cutting cheese and that all that stuff out yeah immediately yeah that, that was a big one yeah people were i've never had that in my life where i would like show up to comedy clubs and people were like oh my god i didn't recognize you right like, that's how my, i mean my face just like deflated right it felt like somebody <laughs> popped my body like a yeah. balloon and just went, your face is where you can someone told me that they, they actually could tell when people weren't having any dairy products is their oh. face they can, can tell from people's how, yeah. how much more chiseled and is that crazy yeah i didn't think i even physically had cheekbones i thought that my body just <laughs> didn't have that bone i just thought i was going to be like a very like round faced gal yeah. my whole life and yeah. then um yeah i was like oh <laughs> you're just for hiding but i didn't know um what but- was food when you were growing up who was the cook in this crazy foosball family? A lot of takeout, a lot of yeah. cereal. My old mom, cereal. my mom was not much of a cook. A lot of a uh, lot of craft mac and cheese. A lot of lean cuisines. Right. <laughs> a lot of Pizza Hut. Mm. And then uh, my dad. So my parents divorced when I was young, and then um, my dad and stepmom. That became this blended family with four kids. And so they were always cooking on a budget. I had a lot of like canned food growing up, like a lot of bunker food, canned green beans, uh, canned pears, things that if I smell them now, I want to vomit violently. Right. Like I have such a visceral reaction yeah. to that. So yeah, um, yeah, you know, they were all, they were all doing their best. Right, right. But yeah, it wasn't. It's uh, kind of good though. Yeah. Because you don't have like these family ties to all these foods that you can't eat anymore. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I have a hard time Mm. quitting stuff from this Italian upbringing that. Oh, sure. Like when I, when I went home and was like, I'm a vegan now, they were like, 
why don't you just spit on all of your ancestors' graves? Why don't you just right. kick your mother right in the stomach? What is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, culturally, that is yeah. such a huge part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were just trash in Spokane. Where, like, if we went out to Olive Garden, that was like a really like that was a big thing. That was to, exotic. Like, red Robin, Red Lobster, <laughs> all the uh, red chilies. Yeah, that was like a fancy. That was like a birthday right. <laughs> meal. So I, I had a very different idea of how old were that. they when you when they split? How old were you when they split? Um, five. Mm-hmm. Five. Yep. Wow. Yeah, maybe almost six, but. That's a hard age. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. That was that was not easy. Those were some very tough years. It was not um, a good divorce. And, yeah. But I do think, uh, like, uh, that's kind of the silver lining of comedy. Is like, I do mm. think that probably helped form some trauma to make me funnier. <laughs> right. Uh, like, at the least, I, I think that, yeah, it made me want to say did, some things. How long did it take to work it out? Or are you still working it out? Uh, like for me to work out my yeah, just divorce? to feel like yeah, like um, like this is okay. This is this is livable where it's not like the main thing you're thinking about as a kid. Oh, uh, pr- probably once I got a car, once I was able to feel a little bit more independent, like I wasn't fully locked into the divorce agreement of you're at this house these days, you're at this house these days. Right. When I felt like I could you know be more of an adult that right. helps me i think have agency and yeah. where you're gonna go have some distance from it but before that's then, a it's, long run <sighs> from five to years to then. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that was that was tough yeah but it's hard i do feel very lucky that i have a really good relationship with all of my parents right now so yeah um, but yeah it took a while and did it um make you look at boys differently um, what do you mean? Like in what way? Are you afraid of commitment because someone's going to split? Oh, no. You know, it's, I think when I look at, so my dad married, um, the woman that he like decided to be with it's right. my mom. So then they have had a, you know, 30 year marriage or whatever. Right. So it's like, it's hard. I think one of the lessons I tried to pull from seeing that was like, um, you know, sometimes people make mistakes. Like, mm-hmm. I know my dad, I think, has regrets about things, but it does seem like he is happy with the person he's with. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, as a child in that house, if I would have wanted them to stay together if they, if one They're or both of really them weren't unhappy. happy. Yeah. So um, I haven't had commitment fears, really, which is, I think, been probably a miracle after yeah. coming out of divorce but yeah. yeah but i you know i was married um myself i got uh, actually divorced a week before covid hit which is Did something i really? talk about in uh, my special that's coming out but yeah and then um what's now, the name of your special by the way it's called the hustler the so hustler. it's about um, this is the hustler tour that we're on um yeah i just wrapped the hustler tour this okay. one's called the nice try tour now but it's still kind of foosball themed so okay. i do the <laughs> bit about hustling people in um the special that's right now yeah awesome yeah. and where can people see it so it will be out on youtube on march 9th okay. for free everywhere if people want to get it early it will be um available for purchase on my website kelseycook.com on february 28th you'll get like nice. a signed poster and a audio download and all that we're trying to make it yeah, you know like nice. a bundle that's a good but, idea but it will be everywhere march 9th yeah. awesome yeah oh, that's great thanks yeah um what were we saying right before the Oh, we're talking about getting it. divorced and... Oh, yeah, then you, mm-hmm. right, oh, right before COVID. Right before COVID. <laughs> right. Yes. That was perfect timing, though. Yeah, it, I mean... I mean, well... Good and bad, yeah. right? I mean, I think there's that perspective of, like, um, what would life have been like if we hadn't? But yeah. also it was, like, the most isolating time for everybody, and it felt very much um, more prominent to go from like living with somebody for eight years into living alone in a global pandemic. It yeah. felt, I felt like I was on some sort of like Guy Fieri reality <laughs> shows, like extreme divorce. It was just like, <laughs> right. you really felt divorced to be living alone in a global pandemic. Where, where like, were you? I was actually uh, here in LA. You were here. Mm-hmm. So you had your friends, you had, well, kind of. I, I had mean, like a few, you know, my yeah. friends that lived here, but I had a lot of friends back home, my family back home. And usually if you go through a 
large, you know, you've been together for a long time, yeah. uh, a massive life change, you and other circumstances would go be with your family. You'd go see your friends, you know, do things that brought you comfort. And it was like a legal mandate. It was like, you can't leave. Yeah. God. So did you do okay? Um, you know, there are some ups and downs. Yeah. <laughs> of a lot of long walks. A <laughs> yeah. lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's, it was yeah. hard. It was yeah. really hard. And but did you say that you got the foosball table during the pandemic? I had that. Yeah. So it was, uh, there's times. <laughs> was it before or after? Practicing foosball. Um, so we had it in our place and then, um, I took it with me into the apartment I moved into. You got, you got custody of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he probably <laughs> wanted it. I don't think he had like a big attachment to it or anything. They're also so loud. Like they're not a <laughs> right. pleasant thing. Yeah. But I sold mine here in LA uh-huh. and then, um, just moved in with my boyfriend in Minnesota and he got me a, a foosball table in our new place as a Christmas gift, which is uh, so, this so is nice. This is going to be a good relationship. Yeah, it was such Can an amazing... Can we say who it is? Yeah, it's uh, Chad Daniels. Yeah. Great comedian. Great comedian. Yeah. So um, that was an amazing surprise. I was in complete shock. So That makes very great perfect gift. sense that he would nail that gift. <laughs> I don't. I only know him a little bit. Yeah. And I, to- I told you before we started, I the... the you just get a real comfortable like vibe that oh this is a this is a good guy that yeah kind of has things figured out is the the vibe i get from him yeah yeah great human and that's a great way to put it too that like i think he's always understood what is important mm-hmm. in life yeah um or at least yeah maybe a balance. Be- yeah like becoming a parent i'm sure has to really shift that in comedy and be like how am i gonna sleep at night like am i gonna feel okay putting certain things in my career way above being a dad and Mm -hmm. having to try to find that balance i can't imagine how hard that is but yeah he's always been somebody that i think is very mindful of what is really important in life so when did you start living with him uh just like five weeks ago i moved to minnesota in january like a psycho yeah i mean so you've never been through a, a, a minnesota winter a minnesota winter this is my first. This is very exciting because <laughs> I've always, is it? yeah, because I've always really thought about that upper Midwest life going full year cycle. Yeah. And I'm probably not going to do it. So it'll be good to watch someone else do it. <laughs> Suffer through. And see how it goes. Yeah. I was just touring in um, upper Michigan and Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. And I Similar. told my wife. We should move to Kohler, Wisconsin. <laughs> She's like, I did that gig. She was like, no. The, did you do like the resort, the Kohler resort? Uh, no, it was a, it was a, like a school theater. Oh, okay. I performed it like, you know, Kohler that makes the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They have a resort up there. Yeah, they with, own the, right. The American club. Yes. Or, yeah. Right, yeah. I performed there years and years ago and I was like the shower with a, 47 shower heads it was crazy. <laughs> what was so crazy was the, they own the whole town oh, Kohler owns okay. the whole town it was like a family that started the whole thing yeah and i literally was in the green room in my dressing room doing the waving underneath it was like a bad yeah. bit that i couldn't get the sink to work at <laughs> Kohler. <laughs> like i'm not here then where yeah exactly yeah but i came back from that i'm like we should live there it, these people are so nice and everybody looks healthy and yeah they're just it's so nice you in the stores i didn't hear a, a police siren the entire two yeah. days i was there <laughs> like we should live there yeah and my wife's like i'm gonna let this phase go <laughs> by and we're not gonna live <laughs> in, in the cold wisconsin winters and there's no way yeah <laughs> it was cold though holy shit it was cold it's intense you're gonna have to get good socks Yes, I, I invested in, in some REI socks. Being from Spokane originally, at least it's not like the most insane culture shock. Sure. Because Spokane does get, we're the same latitude, it does get cold. But that wind and coming off the water Yeah. in Minneapolis, like it's not uncommon to wake up right now and have your phone app say it's like negative 13. <laughs> and that's not what it feels like, that's what it actually is. Right. And... Uh, yeah, I've been learning, like, trying to use a bidet in the winter there is 
something. I mean, I, the <laughs> water feels like local anesthesia. It's like the oh, coldest. No. Like you don't feel your beehole for weeks. It's just like so you have to really decide. Like how like much do I care about this yeah. being clean right now? Because this is probably painful. don't even have to because you're not going to be taking your clothes off <laughs> yeah. for, for a month. No, not Who really under cares. Any circumstance. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, and is he hardy? Like is he? He's a hardy he, Minnesota man. So he's. Yeah, he's lived it forever yeah so he knows yeah he took me uh we went golf you know top golf yeah so there's one in fargo called sweet shots because like of course it has to be like the it's like you know like the kroger uh, yeah <laughs> top golf in fargo <laughs> right and um <laughs> we went out with a couple of his friends there was this in december i think this was in december and it was six degrees and he was like, well, there'll be heat lamps. And I was like, okay. But it's still, anytime you do this, talk about it, the whole front is open. It's just yeah, wide open. Right. You're standing there You're golfing. Outside. I stood there for two seconds by a heat lamp. And I was like, I'm going to eat tacos in the lobby. Like, <laughs> you guys have a nice time. And they're like not even wearing jackets. They're just wearing sweatshirts. Oh, my God. Golfing, drinking tequila. Like, totally fine. It's so Their crazy. blood's different. It's, I Their really, blood is different. It's different. They're like creatures that live in the woods. Yes. And, and they have <laughs> yeah. thick, syrupy blood. He's like something from Harry Potter. He's like <laughs> 100%. found in the deep forest. Yeah. And I just feel like this bird person that I, there was no way I could. I was like, I don't mean to be a party pooper. Yeah. You know, when you're like meeting some of their new friends for the first time, you want to make a great impression. Right. And I just was like, I am so sorry, but <laughs> I think we're going to take me to the ER if like we, we, I don't go inside. This is crazy. I wonder if it'll change you. It has Maybe. to, if you stick it out. Yeah. In your mind, uh, he won't listen to this. In your <laughs> mind, do you feel like eventually you can get him out of there? Or do you feel like uh, you're, I'm going to be here forever? I think I knew that the, that me moving there was going to be me living there forever. Right. So Now you might turn into, like, because I, I had a woman pick me up. I was, in, I was in Traverse City. And it was, like, right on the water, like, super cold. Yeah. And, uh... She picked me up and she was, I don't know, well, it's hard to say. I would say she's probably 68. She, okay. she might be 50. <laughs> <laughs> sure. They're hardy. Minnesota. And different, right? It's that a different, wind? It's not an LA. Oh my God. Yeah. 50. It's like. Absolutely not. But yeah. she was so great, like unfazed by the yeah. weather, by the cold, by yeah. any aggravation. Yeah just even keeled we're gonna get through it kind of people yes it's, it's so very kind. appealing it is yeah because Spokane really people are very kind you know just polite mm -hmm. I, a lot of pleasantries and I grew up around that yeah and when I moved to LA and was here for those six years that was such a shock to me it is a shock it is different yeah the whole like if you hold the door open for people sometimes they just blow by you <laughs> yeah. that was very different to me yeah and it's nice to be in Minnesota it, it does feel very homey and people are so nice it's hard when you're here and you're friendly it's a tough place to be friendly like when I would run through the neighborhood, you know, jogging and I waved to everybody. Yeah. Like a clown. <laughs> like if I had been in Kohler, Wisconsin, they'd be all waving back and I would feel like I, I wouldn't even clock it. Like a clown. <laughs> Sorry, there's something about that visual that's so funny. Yeah. Just this like dopey Hi. guy. Hi. <laughs> and they're not saying, then I'm looking the other way. We're looking right at you and not saying anything. And you're like, oh, I guess. That's the weirdest. F me, I guess. Is the eye contact. Yeah. And, and nothing. nothing. I'm not yeah. giving you anything. Yeah. You weirdo. Yeah. But that isn't, that isn't, I had Gabby Reese on, on the podcast and she, I was said, I said, they may have beaten me. Like, I think I'm a little less friendly now. And she's like, don't you do it. Yeah. And she kind of gave me the assignment. Like you didn't yeah. know go harder into it yeah and and i have i kind of took her advice good yeah and it is better i think so but have you seen that ad you know those series of ads where they uh t don't turn into your parents oh my god yeah those are genuinely very funny They're commercials legit funny yeah and the new round has a guy on an elevator yes yes i'm i'm that guy <laughs> 
Oh my I god! Because I was on a, I was guy at the lounge in Dallas, and I was, and everyone just got on. It was early, and everyone's kind of cranky. It was like yeah. I don't know six people, and this older woman in a bright orange down jacket was just looking at everybody, and she goes, "So where are you going?" <laughs> And where are you going? And I'm, and I, oh, you're going to, and everybody got, gave her an answer. This, yeah. And this is just a short little elevator ride. Yeah. She changed the whole elevator. By the time oh, the doors wow. opened up, everyone walked out. Everyone was like, have a great time in Boise. All right, have fun in Florida. Ha ha. See? And she completely yeah. transformed it. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be that guy. And then that ad came out and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> do I want to be that guy? Do I want to be that guy? Yeah. How yeah. do you feel about grocery store interactions with the um, with the person scanning your groceries? I love it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I call them my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, my, I'm like, my, my daughters, are like when they come with me, because oh I like, sh- I do like going to the supermarket, like, because yeah. I'm planning the food and yeah. it's kind of my role and, uh, and I have a couple that I really like. Yeah. Yeah, I love them all. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was that was a change I noticed for myself that when I lived in L.A., it had kind of broken me down into <laughs> yeah. being at grocery store. Like, I uh-huh. didn't even want to interact. I feel like most of the time they didn't want to interact either. Right. But if they did, I would almost be the person that was more like short answers, just kind of like trying to get out of there because I was so stressed always living here. (laughs) Yeah. My friend has described living here as being on a treadmill that's always set a little too fast. Like every (laughs) aspect of living is harder. Like going to the grocery store isn't just that you roll up to the, it's like maybe you have to deal with a parking garage (laughs) and put your cart on one of those weird cart escalators. Yeah. And if you add that up by the end of the day, you've done more than you needed to do (laughs) to just live. Yeah. And so I used to feel pretty stressed going to the grocery store here. Mm -hmm. And then when I was living in Spokane again for a couple years, I was like, Oh my God, if they were like scanning cat food, they'd be like, (laughs) Oh, you have a cat? Like, yeah. Oh my God. Do you have a cat? Like I would become the person that was very, yeah, yeah. sociable I really liked talking to them and I was like oh this feels like myself again this I know nice. yeah that's really the way you should live yeah and you can you know you can try and be the friendly person here and do that yeah but you are swimming upstream <laughs> <laughs> you really you are you are yeah this city Bonnie yeah. McFarland you know Bonnie mm-hmm. yeah I love Bonnie she's uh she's just the greatest yeah and she had a funny she said she was on the road uh, she was on the road somewhere and she was like getting kind of like tired of the friendly mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. And she's just, and just seeing like, wow, everyone talks everywhere. And then she flew back to Newark and went up to the Starbucks in Newark and the woman behind the register just looked up and went, what? <laughs> oh my God. She was like, I'm home. <laughs> I'm back. I was in, I came from Portland, so I was at um, Helium Comedy Club over the weekend, and Portland, of course, is known for, like, just, of course, like, some very eccentric, almost too friendly of people, Uh and the woman checking me in at the hotel, within 10 seconds of checking me in, had told me that she was learning how to roller skate, (laughs) that she's been covering a lot of punk rock songs on her ukulele. Where you're just like, how did you even find a way to get the, these pieces of information into the conversation? I certainly didn't ask yeah. anything about them. <laughs> yeah, right. And then she had handed me my room keys and she goes, all right, well, come back down here and hang out with me if you want. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't. I Like, what a weird uh, world that would be that I would fly all the way here just and then come be in the lobby where there's no chairs like you want me to just like pop a squat next to you (laughs) help check in people yeah it just sometimes i feel like (laughs) that level of friendly turns into a hostage situation yeah i just i just want to sleep yeah right exactly you're so nice and now you're like scurrying out of the hotel (laughs) trying to make eye contact hoping that she's involved with someone else yeah it is difficult but man and and i think that's what the thing i was craving with the Kohler and why i'm excited for you to go live this life is because it's fewer people. I think it's just literally density. Yes. I I think because I went from Kohler and I had to drive to to Chicago and you just feel it growing. You just feel the the humanity growing by the time you get down there. And it's like, 
I just I just want to be like in a cabin anywhere. Yes. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah. to just to not be around human beings for a, a minute. You need a break. Yeah. Our job is in front of so many human beings. Constantly. Kind of nice to like yeah. hibernate a little bit during the week. Yeah. Where are you going to be next? So I will be, um, I go to New York for the Tonight Show, and then I go from there to Cincinnati for shows in March. Then I'm in Kearney, Nebraska for a random weekend. And then uh, Acme in Minneapolis at the end of March, which I'm excited for. So San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, lots coming up in the next couple of months. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, so what's your, when are you in New York? So um, I will be there Sunday the 26th through Wednesday, March 1st. So I'm doing the Tonight Show on Tuesday, February 28th. Got it. All right. I'm going to be there the week before. Oh, I'll just miss you. Rats. Yeah. Rats. Yeah. This is exciting though. Yeah, thank you. It's going to be very you. cool. A thank lot of good so things are for... happening. It's very nice. Thanks. And thank you for having me on. I've truly been a fan of yours for a very long time. And um, oh, thank you. just love your comedy so much. So it was fun to come on and talk to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, just let me know where the bread ended up. Yeah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> even if it's a, a stranger, someone in a lobby, just, I will. God. just let me know where it went. So much goes into it. What kind of bread is it? This is uh, this is a sourdough. It's oh. it's called an overnight country blonde. Oh my god! So it has um, whole wheat, all purpose, and white rye. Wow! Kind of all mixed together. Oh my god! It's not. It's gonna taste shitty. Don't don't put yourself <laughs> up. It's... It also sounds like an OnlyFans category. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever that was. Overnight country blonde. Overnight country blonde. <laughs> yeah, but man, I, yeah. I do miss sourdough. Sourdoughs are delicious. <laughs> Yeah, and man, I wonder if my daughter, maybe she has candida in her, candida, candida in her belly. Does she have? Is she? His skin. Oh, little bumps. Mm, uh, more like know. acne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Has she been on antibiotics before? Not heavily. Okay. Not really. Well, That's crazy. They gave you that much antibiotic. <sighs> In the beginning of your little life i know i had a similar thing when i went to get my hair cut when i was 16 and he took shaving cream and he shaved me i didn't even need it and he shaved my ears he put and i was like i don't <laughs> think this is a thing but i didn't know i'm 16 yeah. this old italian barber with a straight edge <gasps> and he shaved my ears oh. and i literally have like ear maintenance i have to tend to Oh my god! Because it god. should not be shaved and grow in like a forest. Oh my god! Yeah, but you don't know. You're a kid. You're just like, yeah. all right. She's just gonna do this to my whole face. Yeah. Well, and it's that kind <laughs> of it, it's that people pleaser thing that kicks in when you're in a setting like that. And yeah. someone's like, oh, we're doing this for free. You're just kind of like, okay. <laughs> you're like not thinking about what the potential, like what they're actually qualified to do. No, not at all. And it's my face. You know, she waxed my whole face. <laughs> And then put dirty oil in it. And I like, isn't that crazy? That one day yeah. robbed me of pizza and burgers for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life. And I have mad ear hair. <laughs> so let that be a lesson, kids. Um, Geppetto, <laughs> shaving your ears. God. Well, this was really great. Yeah, uh, thank you so much yeah. for having me on. And uh, say hi to Chad and, and keep, I guess I just have to follow yeah. you on social media to see what the updates are. But if I, sure. I, I will break the social media wall once in a while to ask questions about this new life. I would love that. Yeah. yeah that'd Just be to great. see how it's going and how much, what do they eat up there? Sturgeon or something? There's <laughs> like a lot of sturgeon or something. A lot of wild rice, yeah. <laughs> chicken soups. And yeah, it's a whole thing. All right. All right. Thank see you. you. Soon. Bye. We got it, Aaron. There you have it, everybody. That's Kelsey Cook. Good person. Funny person. Keep an eye out for her special, uh, The Hustler, which will be out in March and on the YouTube go to KelseyCook.com look up all of her tour dates very funny person go to YouTube and look up her last tonight show and her uh, this is not happening very funny sets and uh, and enjoy thank you very much to Kelsey for being here thank for all of you for listening thank you to Diet Smoke for sponsoring and go to TomPapa.com look up all the stuff and also um, my new book also we're going to start talking about this a lot more uh, we're all in this together, so Make Some Room is ready for pre-order now, and uh, we're going to have a lot of book events and things coming up, which we'll be talking about 
in the near future. All right, that's it, kids. Enjoy your day.